are these people? You mentioned that you uh, were involved with the uh, International Solidarity Movement, where they got some news net last week in the parent with the martyring of um, Icentia AG. Uh, those in the audience who might not know, she was the uh, American of Turkish descent who was martyred by the IOF. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the organization itself and what do you believe happened to her? Because now Israel is saying, oh, it was an accident, like, it was an accident. Part of a know, riot, that nonsense. Part of a riot. Yeah. And, you know, especially given what you just shared in terms of your experience, like, uh, because people are saying online, why take the risk of going over there? So... Yeah. If you can kind of speak to that in terms of the organization itself and what do you believe happened to this woman? Thank you. Yeah, um, well, I just wanna address the, the riot claim. So let's remember, when was it in February, the flower massacre in Gaza, mm -hmm. where wherein the Israeli army gunned down Palestinians, both uh, aid workers distributing flour and Palestinians lined up. Uh, this is, I think, west of Gaza City, just on the perimeter. And it was like five in the morning or something like that. And the Israeli army gunned them down and later said, oh, there was a riot. We were defending ourselves." You know, so that's that's what popped to mind, you know, just when you mentioned that, um, which is obviously just garbage, just lies and propaganda, again, from the Israeli uh, military, whomever said that. But so... Um, why would somebody go there? Because they, they have a sense of integrity. They have a sense that right. what what Palestinians are facing and have been facing for seven decades plus is uh, is is slow ethnic cleansing, is is severe oppression, is apartheid, and and the, the people that go there most would know that the media is never going to report honestly. So it's, I think it's, well, I don't know, every person has a different reason, but I think it's multifaceted, wanting to see for yourself so that right. you can then say, I've seen this. Like, I don't care what Guardian or BBC are saying, I've seen this, that's, that's one reason. Also wanting to let Palestinians know as isolated as they feel because of the media and Western politicians and Israel, of course, um, as isolated as they feel to let them know, know there are many, many people that, that care about your situation and, and want to stand with you and do something to change it. So there, there, are, there are many reasons people go. Um, I, as I said earlier, I went because I felt I needed to see for myself. And then I went to Gaza with uh, and joined ISM because um, I understood how awful the situation was in Gaza and the need to break through the media blockade. Um, but in terms of now, I I don't remember where this this young woman was killed. It was a village I wasn't familiar it was with. Nablus, I believe. Oh well, it was uh, must have been outside of Nablus, like in a uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I, I I definitely know Nablus and and villages around there. But I would say not having actually. I'm sorry that I haven't. I've just been a little bit busy, not actually having reviewed. You know what video or uh, articles there have been uh, published on her murder by the Israeli army. It's well established that the Israeli army does this. I mean, go back to the 2000s and an Israeli soldier driving twice over Rachel Corey with a bulldozer, mm -hmm. oh, okay. seeing her in her her fluorescent jacket. They tried to claim later he didn't see her, but everybody was, other activists were filming and they're screaming at him. And they said he looked at her and he drove over her and, and backed up. There are other, not only activists, but um, I'm, I'm, now I won't remember all their names, but like journalists that have been sniped uh, by yeah, Israel and killed. Um, yeah. Tom, T Tom Herndahl, Tom Herndahl back in the day, also in the 2000s. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't remember everyone's names, but so, yeah, Shireen Abu Akhle, Shireen in, um, uh, in Janine. Antiwar.com saying that was in uh, Baita, Baita, right? Mm -hmm. um, that that's where the, the West Bank Village, right? Where that's where that happened specifically. Okay. Um, and I think they talked about that it was like, happened after whatever riot claimed happened like two to three hours after that she was shot hiding essentially so yeah so how is that a response to how, how is that a response logically how is that a response to a riot if two or three right. hours after the so-called riot and she's hiding and the israeli army shoots her how is that a response to a so-called riot like that's yeah. just not even logical it leads me to my next question well, so 
which is like well i'll just uh, please okay. go ahead um, no i was just gonna say um you know my experience with uh protests was largely in belain but also um a, a couple other places but I'm, I'm speaking of the west bank and gaza many experiences and again they don't even this our, our israeli army doesn't even start with tear gas canisters or rubber bullets they fire live ammunition directly in gaza um right. but my experience uh largely was in belain and um what i saw marching many many times with palestinians and like the, the entire village came out you had children you had elderly and i know how the israelis would frame that oh look them putting their children at risk well they shouldn't be at risk because <laughs> they were marching peacefully yeah where right? are they not at but risk what are right they now protesting Ugh. exactly but they're protesting the theft of at that point it was 60 percent of their land right so what i would see and i usually walked with uh you know at the front because i wanted to see what would happen like what how, how things played out rather the israeli army would put razor wire across the road and then uh sometimes the palestinians would reach that razor wire and move it other times they didn't get near it and the israelis started firing tear gas canisters and rubber bullets tear gas canisters and rubber bullets and uh so that's what i saw many 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 times um in in belain and so it would later be sorry it would later be framed like like we're hearing now like riots but it wasn't the case it was a peaceful demonstration so again i wasn't at this one obviously um where this young woman was killed but i can imagine it's the same scenario that it was a, another peaceful demonstration highlighting the issue of the theft of land in, in that area and they were met with the same brutal repression that the israeli army does so well Thank you.